Yo producers, what's good? This is Hit Play here today, and in this video, I'm going to be going over my top five essential free mixing VSTs that every producer needs to have. Okay, so I went ahead and made a demo beat so that I could show you guys all these plugins in action. So all these sounds came from all my kits that are available in the links in the description below. I got a loop from my Vortex kit, I've got an 808 from my Got Bass Pack, and then I've got the drums from my Skyline drum kit. All right, and so this is what we got to work with so far. All right, cool. So that's just a real quick loop that I made. So the first plugin that I'm gonna go over is gonna be the Nova EQ. So this is a really cool free EQ for several reasons. So the main reason that I got it is because whenever I was recording artists, I would always get artists that would bring me two track beats and I would have to mix their vocals into it. So the cool thing about this EQ is it's actually a dynamic EQ that's a mid side EQ as well. So basically for those of you that don't know what I'm saying, you can basically set this up to duck the mono signal of the beat, leaving the stereo information intact and then basically allow the artist to dynamically move on top of the beat without having to statically cut a space for them in the beat. If you don't understand that, don't worry about that. That's a really advanced concept. But the other things that this EQ does is the fact that whenever you cut something, so I need to cut the low end out of this loop, right? because you need to cut the low end out of your loops or melody sections so that your 808 has room to breathe. So the cool thing about this EQ is if I go ahead and cut, not that, there we go. I need a steeper curve. So I'm gonna make the stir the curve really steep and I'm just gonna cut everything below 100. And the cool thing with this EQ is it's got EQ auto gain. So if I turn this off, it's not gonna do anything. It'll just cut the low end out of the melody. And so I'm actually, I think I cut too much out, so I'm just gonna back it up a little bit. But if I turn EQ auto gain on, whenever you remove frequencies with an EQ, one of the things that's gonna happen is that it, the signal is just gonna naturally get quieter because you're removing energy from the signal. So with this EQ auto gain, this is gonna turn the signal back up proportionally, automatically, as you remove frequencies. So I'm actually going to pull this back and I'm gonna turn this EQ auto gain on and then I'm gonna pull it forward and you'll hear that it automatically corrects the volume as I remove frequencies from the track. Now this is too much, but I just brought that up so you guys could hear what it's actually doing. So I'm gonna bring this back down to 100 and we're gonna move on to the next plugin. All right, and so the next plugin that we're gonna talk about is one called Wider. And Wider is a stereo imaging plugin. This is actually the stereo imaging portion of a plugin called Manipulator. And a lot of people would just throw it on vocals and stuff like that to make things wider in the mix. So like to put on background vocals to make those wider and to the sides. It's really cool because even when you pull it all the way out to 200%, it's still supposed to stay in phase, which means that you're not gonna lose anything in your stereo field. I never go that far. I usually stay about 20 to 30 percent because i don't like things too wide and i let the engineers make things wider in my beats if they need to but i'm just going to slowly pull this up and you'll kind of hear what it's doing to just the loop see and that's way too wide back in the center it's about 40 and then if i play it with the drums And so when you do stereo imaging, typically it's going to appear that things are louder. Typically I pull it down just a touch and kind of rebalance after I use stereo imaging. So that way that it's not too loud and too wide. So I'm going to rebalance this real quick and show you guys. And so 
now that this is rebalanced and it's wider, it's actually not fighting with the 808. It's not clashing with anything in the center. So this is a really great plugin to kind of get that wide mix or get things sounding wider in your mix. All right, and so the third plugin that we're gonna talk about is one called Pancake. And Pancake is from a company called Cable Guys. They're from the same people that made Halftime or um, ShaperBox. So what's really cool with this plugin is you can kind of draw in your own curves, kind of the same as what you would do with ShaperBox if you're familiar with that plugin. What's really great is the fact that it's just an auto pan. So it's really simple and easy to use. You can draw in your curve. I usually just typically put it on my closed hi-hats and crank this all the way up and you'll hear that the hi-hats are panning left and right so you can adjust the timing so if I just want each other one because I just did a two-step pattern if I want each one to be on its own side I need to make this a square shape all right so I got a square shape right here and as you can hear it's gonna pan each one left and right on its own And so now I'm actually gonna back this off because me personally, I don't like to hard pan anything left and right. So I'm just gonna knock this down to about 40%. And now it's bouncing back and forth left and right. So this is a really great plugin to help give your track some movement and get things off center again, leaving room for the 808, the kick, the snare, and the vocalist. So I think this is a really, really important plugin to have, not only just to use on percussion, but you can also use it on melodic instruments as well. All right, and so the fourth plugin that we're gonna talk about today is one called Couture, I believe is how you say it. It's right here, it's by Auburn Sound. So this is from a company that they have three free plugins available, and then you have to pay to unlock the extra features in said plugins. So this is the version that I did not pay for, so it does. you can't use the saturation function, which would be really great. But what's really cool is that it's a transient shaper. So basically this is how you get certain elements in your mix to kind of hit a little bit harder or to stand out. So I have it on my drum bus. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, it's not active right now and I'm actually only gonna use it times one, but you can change this by how intense you want it. I usually don't go past times two, but this is all my drum bus, right? So I'm just gonna solo my drums and then I'm just gonna crank this up and you guys can kind of hear what it does. And that's way over exaggerated and that's actually clipping so i'm not going to do that so i'm going to go back down to one i'm just going to do that and you can also do it in reverse and that's why i like this plugin so i can suck away the transients and make something less sharp or less pronounced in the mix so this is really helpful for like tucking things back in the mix you get a lot of control right here so I'm actually, I'm going to undo all of this. I'm actually just gonna turn it off. You can also put it on melodic elements as well. So I'm gonna put it on the sample and see what happens. It might help, it might not. But typically you, you put transient shapers on like guitars or things that need, that are kind of a more percussive melodic element that you're like plucking. You can put this on plucks as well to give them some more transient, some sustain. So let's see what it does when I put it on the sample. So this is not a very good example. So it'd be better if I had guitars, but I don't have any guitar loops right now, so we're not gonna worry about that. But again, this is a really great plugin to kind of tuck things back in the mix or to make things kind of come up a little bit more or come forward in the mix. All right, and so the fifth and final plugin on this list is gonna be one called Ulean Loudness Meter. Now this is actually the older version. I don't know why it didn't update, but this is not how it looks currently. I think the newer version is white. Um, they still work the same. The algorithms are still the same, so it's still gonna give you all the same information but this is a loudness meter or level meter. So basically if you're worried about, maybe you're not even worried about it, but if you're wanting to sell beats online or send beats to artists, you wanna make sure that all your beats have a consistent volume. You don't want one to be really loud, one to be really quiet, one to be in between. So you can use a loudness meter. This one's free. I really recommend it because this is what I've been using for like the last, what, six months. It's really reliable, really great. And I'm gonna do a more in-depth video on it in the future. Just basically it's in LUFS and this is like loudness units full scale. So it's a term, it's better than using RMS. It's more reliable and it tells you how the, like what the actual loudness of your track actually is. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my limiter. I'm gonna turn it down. It was at negative 4.8. For me, typically right now, my tag 
leases, like the demo that, that artists hear on my website, they're currently, the highest they hit is negative 12.6, which is really loud considering like how loud, like how loud it actually is, right? So if I play it now and pull up the limiter, you'll actually see like how this actually works. Cool, and that's already hitting like negative 12.2, so I'm actually gonna back it off just a touch. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Make sure you go ahead and you hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed it, and the like button down below as well. And until next time, guys, peace.